Here we go again. That was pretty close, Andy boy. Yep. Close, Andy. Now. Yep. Tried that motion. The motion is not the only problem, although the swell combined with weak wind is definitely not comfortable. We've just sailed 250 nautical miles from Cuttyhunk, Massachusetts, to this spot off Cape May, New Jersey. As you saw in our last episode, it was not an easy passage, but to make matters worse, it ended with our engine giving us trouble and having to use our spinnaker in the light breeze. Then, when the wind died completely, we tried using the dinghy as propulsion, but the swell made that unsustainable, and now here we are. We're going 3-3. Three, three. Um, all right, I'm gonna get prepared to jive here, and uh, it looks like the current's going in our favor up the bay too, so that should help a little bit. Yeah, 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 it's breaking pretty much. Um, I'm gonna buddy, put some tile up in a minute as well. All right, copy that, let me uh, get organized here. Thanks for coming out and getting us. Before jumping off from Cuttyhunk, we departed from Maine with our friends Andy and Charlie on sailing vessel Avalon, who, like us, are making their way to Annapolis. They were just ahead of us on this passage to Cape May, New Jersey, and consequently are about 10 miles away from our current location, the spot we'd been trying to reach. Seeing as these 10 miles could take us four or five hours to transit, they've come to our rescue and kindly offered to tow us to the next anchorage we'd planned to go to, about 50 miles from Cape May in the Delaware Bay. Hello. Hi. Okay. Here we go again. Seven knots. It's freaking crazy. We're going seven knots. We're going seven knots. Our windlass is not working now. Our windlass is not working. Nope. At all? No, I can't get to go down. I want to move the anchor. Let's take those circuit breakers and trip. Oh, God. God. How are we going eight knots? And it's crazy. What's that sound? Is nope. It's on. What the fuck, dude? That's gonna complicate things, right? Annie boy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, my name is Gumbay Bay. I think it's hitting off our anchor, but my windlass won't turn on now. <laughs> I am not winning right now. Uh, look, is it because you've got pressure on it from the tow? Uh, the motor's not even activating. I feel like maybe the switch got wet or something from all the water in the bow locker. Okay, look, bless you, mate. Um, how's that, buddy, mate? Yours, mate? You, you got, because you're actually contributing quite a lot to this. She looks pretty well trimmed. She come in a little bit. Seven and a half knots. Not feeling too bad. No, we're going eight knots. Yeah, that's kind of absurd. You, you have an engine on, obviously, right? I've got two on, mate. I'm sitting about 1,800 reps. I'm going to put you down. Yours again. My point, you're stubborn. 
Yeah, that way, because <laughs> that wind gen's kind of flying around. Um, all right, so I'll rig three lines. Um, we've got a bow line. Our weather doing. Where's your um, bow cleat? Where would you, if we give you a loop, where will, where's your bow situated? Your, where would you put it on your bow? I would probably just, uh, it would be going through the starboard chalk, going to my port cleat. Roger, okay, no worries. So if it was, because obviously our cleat's pretty much got the feet back from our bow, if we had 10, 12 foot on that, that'd be enough, wouldn't it? Yeah, I would say so. I think my, my dock lines are like 30 feet each, I believe. Okay, no, no, we'll just, we'll just get a bow line organized and we'll pass that to you. As we come alongside, you get that on your bow and then I'll just just slowly nudge the head and that'll just keep us together while we saw the rest of the ship fight out. So I will get, I'll get stern, I'll get my, I'll got three lines, I'll get a couple springs and a stern out then, ready to go. You got it, buddy, that's perfect. All right, mate, uh, we're not far off wanting to, uh, Start thinking about slowing down. Let's just get to the other side of this little pseudo channel here. Looking at the track from last year, I was a little more starboard, but it looks like you have all deep water um, up ahead. Yeah, look, I was just going to go out to the front and line up on the entrance, but um, we'll just give ourselves plenty of wiggle room anyway. We'll, um, we'll call it quits in another couple of minutes, man. Cool, so I will go get some dock lines organized. I'll throw my duck lights so we can see what we're doing. So the plan is, um, we because there's so many lobster pots, we decided to raft up to Avalon outside of this cove, um, just because if he were to get caught on a lobster pot and we're being towed astern, he's gonna stop dead in the water and we have no way of uh, slowing ourselves down because we don't want to hit reverse. So we're gonna pull, we're gonna stop just outside the cove and we're gonna raft up alongside Avalon and then he, we're gonna proceed in together, tied up together. So. Um, we could manage all four of us look for pops, and you know I think it makes the most sense. Yeah. So we're gonna get some dock lines ready. Yeah. Just another day in cruiser land, huh? Yeah. Now that we've made it to the anchorage, we're trying to get anchored without snagging a fish pot, which are all over this area. So we're gonna raft up to Avalon, and then we'll maneuver through the pots together. And since it may be hard to tell on video, I should mention that it just happens to be a densely foggy and moonless night here on the Delaware Bay. The bow is pretty close, Andy boy. Yep, close, Andy. The bow. There we go. Andy, a bit over. There you go. The weight will be on the springer, and then the bow line will just hold it in and hold it parallel. As she comes back, the bow will want to go out. Yeah, there's another one. It's kind of coming on your starboard. I can't tell I'm not used to this boat. It's pretty close. God, it is so dense. <laughs> Always an adventure. <laughs> yeah, this water looks like just brown. Thank you, sir. We got Dr. Andy on board today. <laughs> Gonna. <laughs> Take a little look-see at our engine. Ooh, that's, yes, that's very goopy. What does that mean? Stick. Mm. Mm. Time mm. for change. Yes. But <clears throat> why do I need oil change more frequently than everybody else? I mean, I'm burning something, right? Well, you're, you're getting fuel in your oil. <clears throat> you're unbur it's unburnt or in incomplete combustion. 
So you're not getting an efficient burn anymore. So it's compre is that a compression problem? So you're getting, yeah, your engine's just worn out. It's just blow by on your rings. She's not burning the burning all of the fuel completely. So it's an incomplete burn, so you're getting residue of soot. It's not getting a nice hot burn, it's just bloody... Yeah. Okay. He's just died. You got water coming out of your exhaust? No. Hey? Nope. Zero. When we inspect the raw water strainer, it looks like the seal may be bad, so we bypass it by connecting it directly to the raw water pump to test the theory, and that seems to solve the problem. It means that air was entering the cooling system, and that probably caused the awful sound we heard. So we'll leave things like this until we can pick up a new strainer in Annapolis. So Kohansi Cove, where we came to escape from our offshore horror trip <laughs> um, has now turned against us. Uh, something happened at 3 a.m. Um, the wind changed and it seems like there's wind going against current in this anchorage and it's horrible. Um, I can sleep through anything, almost anything. And I, I did go back to sleep eventually, but I woke up and I couldn't sleep. Um, Well, the sun has risen, so we're gonna have some coffee right now and just get out of here. Um, and the plan is to go to the canal today, the C&D Canal. So that's putting us closer and closer to Annapolis. So that's exciting. And um, on another note too, I just wanted to mention that since we've been here, we haven't had to run the heat very much. Um, it's so much warmer. Uh, I guess we've gone four or 500 miles um, since we left Maine uh, five days ago. So it makes a big difference at this time of year. Um, so yeah, it's nice. are starting to look up. Besides the engine, Bill was also able to fix the windlass yesterday. It turned out to be a bad wire in the remote, so he repaired it with solder. It feels good to be chilling a little bit after that trip down from Maine. I know, and having like real like meals too. I know. We left Maine six days ago, we're in Chesapeake Bay, so it's been sort of a marathon. And we had some mechanical issues in the middle, so it feels good to like make a normal dinner, chill out, yeah. drink a little wine, listen to music. Carrots and potatoes. This is like the first like big meal we've made um, since we left Maine like five days ago. Um, I had like a big thing of lasagna that I made, so we ate that for like three days and then just ate like easy foods. Um, so yeah, it feels good to be back into the routine and we're so close to Annapolis now.
days here was in the Azores. In the summer of 2018, they were headed over to mainland Portugal. They went to Lisbon. Yeah, really good friends, great buddy boat for a while, and we missed them. Oh, and Grace Hello. is up! Hey, Grace! Hello! <laughs> Hi guys! Fun to see everybody, huh? Yeah. Have fun for your hunt. So we were just coming into Annapolis now and um, that was two of our friends kind of welcoming, three of our friends welcoming us in, our friend Jeff and Nat and Jessica of MJ Sailing, who we've known for a really long time actually. Ooh, cool. Yeah! Reunited! <laughs> <laughs> this is not how I thought this passage was gonna end. <laughs> Here we are in a fog again, guys. Oh, yeah. Back in the fog. Hey, he's looking for the lobster pot. Oh no ah, shit! All day, we're tired. No knives necessary. That is a lot of There's junk on there. A lot of shit on there. That is so That's much stuff. How do they move? <laughs> Did Grace puke in? <laughs> Grace puke in the Cheers. I smashed Brian's boat. Yeah, we did. The rear bumper that he fiberglass came up like we were pulling up behind it and he was on the stern and the boat came up 